What's up YouTube? I'm Max G Man back here with another video to do about the ban list. Cause I know every YouTuber and their mom does one of these. But yeah, I actually really just wanted to get my own thoughts and opinions out there about what I think the list is gonna be. Now, this is not I'm not saying this is gonna be a list that I would like. I'm not saying that this is gonna be the exact list, obviously. I'm all I'm doing is making a trying to make an accurate as possible prediction of what stupid decisions Konami will make September 1st. So, for banned cards, I have Future Fusion. Um, I know Konami really barely pays uh, any attention to the TCG, but they have to do something about this card because as soon as that Dark e heroes comes out, there's gonna be too many ridiculous ways to use Future Fusion as a foolish burial on crack. You're gonna have half hero decks and half something else that can just toolbox with future fusion um, use our grave as a toolbox just to dump anything they want not to mention the obvious chaos drag and luck sackiness um, where it basically becomes a win condition in that deck so yeah I mean imagine chaos heroes like use future fusion and Zephyros dump a bunch of lights and darks in the grave and then remove them off for boss monsters yeah that, that doesn't sound too good um so that's why I think Future Fusion has to go. Uh, the second banned card on my list is going to be Wind Up Hunter. Um, Wind Up Hunter is banned because it makes the game completely unfair unless you draw Effect Veiler or Maxi. Um, and the odds of you drawing those cards are very small unless you're running three of each. And if you're running three of each of those, then those are six spots in your deck that they might have been other cards to help you win other matchups, but no, you have to main these cards just to kill, you know, a wind-up loop that, you know, really isn't fair. So, the fact that you can just play wind-ups and have instant advantage out of nowhere, and if you drop Pot of Avarice, just win the game, basically, you know, that's really, um, that's really bad. So, wind-up hunter getting banned would keep wind-ups playable, it would make them a deck that people would still want to use. They would just have to find creative ways to you know, clear their opponent's monsters. Which shouldn't be too hard because Dino Rabbit does it anyway with their infinite back row that I hate so much. So yeah, uh, Wind Up Hunter getting banned would just make the game less retarded. If Wind Up Hunter said discard, it would be so much more balanced. But no, send. Screw you, Konami. It does nothing for the deck except give it unfair advantage, which they didn't work for at all. You're just like, tour guide wind up factory, game. <laughs> no, no, not game. Bullshit. Darkness Metal to 1, just because Heretics and Gustav Max and the brokenness and the FDKness. Damn. Uh, Lagia to 1, because Dino Rabbit needs to get hit somehow. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's topped multiple regionals and YCSs and crap like that, so I mean, it's like the best to second best deck in the TCG right now, easily. Um, the deck just needs to get slowed down. Uh, Tsukiyomi to one is a card that a lot of people are predicting to come back because A, you know, we only have one Book of Moon. B, Tsukiyomi doesn't really set up any OTKs, uh, so that's something Konami doesn't mind. You know, C, if anything, it doesn't hurt the product that they're promoting because exceeds don't lose their materials when they're set down. So, you know, Tsukiyomi would... I could see Tsukiyomi coming back easily. Um, that's a th decision that Konami could easily make. No harm there. Uh, same thing with Spore. Spore, most commonly, will become a level 4. And what do you know, the most printed exceed out there is Utopia. Um, Spore, most likely, is going to become level 4 because of, well... Think of all the cards you could use with Spore. That's right, all two of them. Then we got either Goyo Guardian or Trish coming back. Now, I understand it's pretty easy to make Goyo. I understand Goyo has a crap load of attack, but it doesn't do anything to hurt the game. I mean, unless your opponent is maining triple Starlight Roads and you're maining triple Lightning Vortex, Goyo isn't running over a startup. Goyo coming off the ban list to one. Oh no, your Goyo ran over my... Zen mains? Um, no, no, you, ju you just attached the material. Oh no, your Goyo just ran over my Utopia. Well, well actually, I negated the... Oh no, Utopia had no materials. Well, well then, um, it, it goes straight to Grave. Yeah, Goyo isn't broken. Um, the most commonly used cards in the game mean nothing if you steal them now. Oh no, Goyo stole my Lagia. Um, oh, okay. 
yeah, it, no, no materials. Next, we have Trish, because Trish is hard to make. I mean, can you think of an actual way to summon Trish nowadays? Let's see, um, Spore? Then I put Wind Up Factory to one, just because Wind Up Factory is freaking stupid, and it's a black whirlwind for wind ups, and if black wings got hit, wind ups should get hit the same freaking way. Imagine if they hit uh, wind ups as hard as they hit black wings. I would be so happy. Then for the last limited card on my list, we have either Insector Dragonfly or Insector Centipede. Everybody knows that Hornet isn't the problem. You know, like, it's the sword, but you gotta kill the wielder. So, basically, either you kill their special summon or you kill their search. Either you kill, you know, their monster reborn, slash, you know, summon from the deck last wheel bullshit, or you kill their Rota. Either one has been shown to hurt a deck throughout every archetype in existence. So if you kill one of those cards, you hurt the deck. Duh. Obvious. Who has to explain it? Alright, to semi-limited on my list, I have either Agent of Earth or TG Striker. They can't both come back at the same time because then TG Agents would be playable again and Konami wouldn't want that, especially since the deck really doesn't promote exceeds. However, Striker, in my opinion, is way more likely to come to two just because, well, TG's on their own. You know, they're a decent engine and they were hit for no reason. Um, really... TG Skill Drain was basically monsters with Skill Drain, and TG Agents was basically agents with random archetype inserted. Uh, TGs could come back, they wouldn't really hurt the meta. If anything, they would just give decks more tuners to make Goyo Guardian. There you go. Then I have Mizuki to 2, because the playability of zombies, although they are good when you do certain things, especially now with Levolvol Chain, um, I've come to see that zombies just lack a certain, you know, versatility without running the two mizukis you're forced to rely more on book of life and cards like that and it's just it's really not consistent enough to make the deck go anywhere i know we have tour guide levier now to bring back mizuki um but that's still not fast enough considering you're most likely going to use your normal summon on something like a zombie master or if you're playing it goblin zombie or a plague or something like that so um if they brought mizuki to two it just gives zombies more versatile plays it would make them have a legitimate reason to run Burial because, trust me, if you don't get Mizuki out, then Burial from the def Different Dimension is such a dead card. So, with that being said, Mizuki to 2. Then I have Best Yari because, well, Glads don't do shit. Uh, Debris Dragon or Lone Fire Blossom. When was the last time someone played any of these cards? Um, Debris Dragon to 2 because, well... The deadliest play I see is Debris Dragon, uh, Hornet, Equip Gigamantis, Swing for 34. Oh no! Yeah. Not, not scary. Um, plus Black Rose, no one cares about Black Rose. You can't summon Stardust with Debris Dragon unless you have another level 1 monster randomly lying around. Like, Debris Dragon is just... It's not good anymore. Then we have Lone Fire. Well, at least you'll be able to search Titanio, which will just tribute itself. Bad. Lone Fire doesn't have enough support in the meta anymore to make it really a broken card outside of Dandelion and possibly Spore coming back. You have no real reason to use the card at all. I mean, da Dandelion is at one, so if you're running two Lone Fires and a Dandelion, then kudos if you don't dead draw. You know, you know Lone Fire is a pretty bad card now. Then we got Tor Guide because, well, Tor Guide is Tor Guide and Tor Guide is broken. Yeah. Tour Guide is still consistent at 2, you can still get its effect off twice, however, it is less broken. Basically, if you wanted to run Tour Guide, you could run just two Tour Guides without the Sangan and have it be perfectly consistent enough to get you out of the next seed. Windups would still be able to use it, because all they need is the one. Um, plus, if you do want to run the Sangan, you don't always have to search out the Sangan, you're not always forced to bring out Sangan with Tour Guide just to make sure that your other Tour Guide isn't dead. You can... Be go like you can go oh I need a sand again so I'll just get it out with tour guide or it can be like well I want to play defensively and I'll just get out the second tour guide in my deck and make a Zen mains or something you know you're not always forced to go tour guide sand again or something like that the only downside is if you do go tour guide sand again you have a dead tour guide in your deck but you know what run tour bus it, it's a good card or you could run that level three fiend that can be used as any fusion material monster and then run that in a deck like a chaos hero deck and then dump it in the grave with future fusion and Miracle Fusion into- oh my 
god, that's broken. Then you have Rescue Rabbit, because Rescue Rabbit's a bitch. Yeah, I said it. Well, I, no, bitches are dogs. Rescue Rabbit's a rabbit. What do you, what do you call a rabbit that's a bitch? If Rescue Rabbit doesn't get hit to two this list, it'll definitely get hit to two next list. Then we have Book of Moon, because, well, Book of Moon is a really good card. And personally, I think Book of Moon is just as broken as Lance. And Lance isn't terribly broken. And Lance is at three. So, I mean, the least they could do is either bring Sukiyomi back or Book of Moon to two. Then I have Final Countdown, Card Card D, or One Day of Peace. These three cards, any time they're played, you just, you just bow your head and just think about killing your opponent. And it's like, oh, oh, man, you're losing. Oh, let's see. I have a field full of Insectors, and you just top decked a one day apiece and drew into a card that that card was a Monster Reborn, and then you passed your turn, and then I couldn't win, so I passed my turn, and then you top decked a BLS, and then you summoned it, and then I used Torrential, and then you Reborn, and you attacked me for game. Stuff like that. That's just an example of how one day of peace can be used in a competitive deck. When it's in a stall deck, it's worse. We all know that. Same thing goes with Final Countdown. Three copies. Like, I don't want you to be able to draw Final Countdown more than twice in a game. At, at the most. Let's say I saw him your first Final Countdown. You just play another one from your hand? Bullshit! No. Get the hell out of here. Screw you. And then Card Cardi, just because it's being really, 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 extremely ultra mega super hamtastically overused in the OCG, and that needs to stop, because Card Cardi plus D Boys equals drive by. Yeah. Nobody uses D-Boys in the OCG. But Card Card D is nevertheless a problem, and it probably should be addressed just because it's become some generic cookie-cutter staple in the OCG. And last time I checked, the last format like that was... I don't know. If Konami had an IQ higher than Effect Veiler's attack points, then they would probably hit this card. But you can't be too faithful. Then we have MST to 2, just because this card is used way, 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 way too much. I can almost guarantee you that this card is in your side deck. I can almost guarantee you that MST is in your side deck. Because you're probably maining a Heavy Storm in double MSTs, if not three. And then if you're maining double, the third one's in your side deck. It's just, it's basically a fact. MST is played in threes way, way, way too much, and it's super annoying when you have a Starlight Road set, or, you know, something like a Torrential or a Solemn set, and then they MST and Heavy Storm you. The last cards to two on my list are gonna be either Gale, Kalud, or Whirlwind. If Kalud came back to two, I don't think it would push the deck anywhere. And I'm being really honest here, just because, you know, Kalud, although it helps you get 14 extra attack, like, Really, it's not enough for game anymore unless you're OTKing. You get what I'm saying? Like, decks that can just negate Kalud like Dino Rabbit, or decks that can just OTK you like Insectors or Windups, or decks that can OTK you really, really, really badly like Heretics. Like, what are you going to do if Augustus Max attacks your Gale and you're like, Kalud? And you're like, well, shit. Yeah, doesn't matter. Kalud. In this format, in a format this fast, in a format this destructive, the 14 extra attack boost from Kalut can almost be completely ignored by any tier 1, even tier 2 deck, just because they have the means to get around it, you know? Um, so that's why I think Whirlwind or a Gale to 2 would be way better for the deck. Um, it helps with the exceeding if they brought Whirlwind or Gale to 2. Whirlwind, you normal summon a Shura, search a Sirocco, special the Sirocco, exceed. You know, easy exceed helps a lot, um, even if you're just going into like a utopia, you know, especially if they had a winged beast exceed out there somewhere, then you could just overlay to that, you know, maybe set an Icarus attack for some protection or something. That's good. I don't see Kalut helping the deck like that. Gale to two, you know, really big threat in the field. Gale, you know, like, let's say you have a Bora on the field, you just go, Bora, Gale, Gale, half with Gale, half with Gale, sink or something, you know, like really... Double halving with Gale isn't as bad as it sounds. I mean, most likely, you know, the thing that um, they have is it doesn't have enough attack to be survived by the first half anyway. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, for you, for it to really matter, it has to be like a five-headed dragon. 
Because when Gale has the five-headed, it's still at 25, and their armed wing can't run it over. So then the set Gale would have it again. Ooh, man, broken! Yeah, I mean, unless you have something with 5,000 attack, the have that Gale does is probably going to mess you up. Then, to three, I would say Emergency Teleport, Summoner Monk, Swords of Revealing Light, Marshmallow, and Necrogartna. E, Telly, and Summoner Monk. Needless to say, those are the best cards on the to three list, and even then, they don't see enough play to really be to two. Um, when was the last time anyone used Swords of Revealing Light or Marshmallow? Well, the only, only annoying thing about Swords of Revealing Light is that Mist Valley Falcon exists. And if you don't run any back row destruction, Chaos Dragons, <coughs> yeah, I know you have Lila, but you need to normal summon that. Solve them. Anyway, if you don't have any back row destruction, okay, you can't get past the Swords of Revealing Light. Like, big freaking deal. Like, that's your fault for not maining triple MSTs like everybody and their mother. But, yeah. So, basically, Swords of Revealing Light, not really broken. Same goes for Marshmallow. Marshmallow can be a bitch at times, but really, like, most likely if they're using a Marshmallow, it's some kind of janky stall deck that you're just gonna OTK eventually because they run out of stall power, you know? Um, then an Acro Gardener. Uh, let's see. I attack with Gustav Max. Necro Gardener! Oh, man. Oh, wait. I attack with Gaia Dragoon. Necro Gardener! Oh, oh man. O okay. I attack with my second Gaia Dragoon. Necro Gardener! Oh, oh. Oh. Basically, um, Triple Necro Gardener will never really matter. <laughs> Battle Fader is a much better card, so if anything, they should swap places on the ban list. Um, so yeah, that's my actual ban list.